Hey there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about sample rate. So let's assume that you're setting up a session because you wanna to start to record some tracks. Usually, when you set up a new session, you'll be given the option to select which sample rate you want to use. Now, first and foremost, what is sample rate? Well, there's quite a common misconception that the sample rate is related to the quality of the recording, and so the higher you set the sample rate, the better the quality of the audio will be. And that's actually not the case. What the sample rate actually does is it determines the range of frequencies that can be captured and reproduced. And the way that this works is that the highest frequency that can be captured and reproduced will be half the value of the sample rate. So a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz would let you capture and reproduce frequencies up to 22.05 kilohertz. For a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, you would go up to 24 kilohertz. Now, as human beings, we can hear up to about 20 kilohertz. And in fact, most adults can only hear up to about 16 kilohertz. But theoretically, somebody with perfect hearing could hear up to 20 kilohertz. And so with sample rates of 44.1 kilohertz and above, you're able to capture and reproduce all of the frequencies within the range of human hearing. So assuming that you're gonna record some tracks, which sample rate should you go for? Well, my advice would be that you go for 48 kilohertz. Now you might say, well, if 44.1 kilohertz can already capture all of the frequencies that human beings can hear, what's the benefit of going up to 48 kilohertz? Well, very, very briefly, the analog to digital converters in your interface aren't able to capture the frequencies above this maximum frequency properly. So with 48 kilohertz, we know that the maximum frequency we can capture is 24 kilohertz. And allowing your analog to digital converter to capture frequencies above this point can cause a type of distortion that's known as aliasing. So to prevent this, your analog to digital converter will have something called an anti-aliasing filter, which is a low pass filter. And that's basically there to filter out the frequencies above this point before the signal's converted. And so all that means is that at 44.1 kilohertz, the slope on the anti-aliasing filter has got to be pretty steep. And so going up to 48K just means that there's a little bit more room for a more gradual slope. Now, having said that, if you were to record at 44.1 kilohertz, it would probably be absolutely fine. Uh, you can just think of 48 kilohertz as a bit of a best practice. Now, you might ask the question, well, why not go higher than 48K? Well, as we've already established, you're not gonna get any improved quality by increasing the sample rate. All you're really doing is creating bigger files, which will therefore require more processing power. And there are actually also some quite convincing arguments to state that higher sample rates might actually make your music sound a little bit worse. So to my mind, 48K is perfect. It lets you capture and reproduce everything that human beings can hear, and it leaves a little bit more room for the anti-aliasing filter than 44.1 would. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to get a bit of a head start with your mixing in your home studio, then head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. And there you can download three free guides. There's an EQ cheat sheet, a compression cheat sheet, and a vocal recording guide that I think you'll find really useful. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel for future videos, and I'll see you next time.